Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going to go over a ASVAB mathematical knowledge practice test. I did half of this test in a previous video. I'll put a link right here. And then uh, this is going to be the second half of the test. I highly recommend you have a notebook out, paper and pencil. You do the problems before I do them. Unpause the video and then watch how I do them. There's a lot of tips and tricks you could pick up from watching these videos. This isn't a lesson in all of the math you should have. It's a review and also some test taking strategies. So let's get started. Number 14, 125% is equivalent to these four answers. The way I remember this is I have 125%. This thing's like an arrow and it's saying go over one, two places. So I start right here. These two dots remind me to go over one, two places and I get 1.25. Correct answer B. Uh, pause the video and then let's do the next problem. Number 15, triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle with a base of 14 inches and its perimeter is three feet. What is the length of each of the legs of the triangle? So there's a lot of vocab here. The first word is isosceles. Isosceles means two equal sides. So this and this are congruent or the same length. Perimeter means all the way around the outside. So three feet is three feet times 12 inches, 12 inches to the foot. To give me all the way around, it's 36 inches. 36 inches minus that 14 inches is gonna give me 22 inches. So that means 22 inches plus 14 inches is a 36 all the way around. These two are equal and they add up to 22. So each one has to be 11 inches. Correct answer, answer D. Number 16, which value of X will make the following number sentence true? Just an algebraic equation. Uh, you need to solve for X. And as I'm looking at this thing, if you can't quite remember, you got to um, subtract 25 from both sides. You could just kind of figure it out by plugging values in. Negative 13 plus 25 is going to give you negative 12. Negative 11 is going to give you 14. Negative 12 and 25 is going to give you the 13. Correct answer, answer C. The way you do algebra in general is you try and reverse the operation. So if this is addition, you subtract 25 from both sides. Now you have x by itself, 13 minus 25 gives you the negative 12. My point is you could do the algebra if you remember that. If not, you could kind of use the answers to figure out a good solution. All right, uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. This is Colfax Math. Also share with anybody else you might know who's studying for a standardized math exam. And if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. Number 17, again, I'd pause the video here do problem 17, unpause the video and watch how I solve it. How many faces does a cube have? It's a little bit of a tricky problem, right? Because you're asking for faces. So it would have one, two, the back, three, four, four sides, a top and a bottom. So that would be six faces. So if it asked for sides, it would only be the four sides, but it's asking for faces, so it's all six, just like a die. Number 18, what is the length of a rectangle? So what is the length of a rectangle when the width is nine and its area is 117? So just kind of converting that sentence to a picture is a big help. I have a rectangle. I know area is length times width. Kind of like that algebra problem before, I have 9 times L equals area 117. Um, and then I just have to do 117 divided by 9. I could try and just pick answers and plug them in. Uh, 1 times 9 is going to be nowhere near over 100. 10 times 9 is going to be like 90 plus. Okay, that can't be it. 12 times 9. 9 times 10 is 90 plus 9 times 2, 18, 90, and 18 is 108, still too low. So it looks like it's going to have to be 13. 
Let me just double check that. 13 times 9 is 27. 9 times 1, 9, 10, 11 gives me 117. Correct answer, answer D. Right, because 9 times 13 gives me that area of 117. Number 19, another vocab question, really. A square is a special case of all of the following geometric figures, except parallelogram is two pairs of parallel sides. Rectangle is two pairs of parallel sides. A rhombus is two pairs of parallel sides. And by definition, a trapezoid is a set of only one parallel sides, and the other two are not parallel. So a square is a special case of all of the following, except it's going to have to be a trapezoid. So it's a hard problem because you got to know what all of these words mean, and you got to kind of differentiate. But you could see that these three all have the similarity of parallel sides. So the trapezoid's the odd one out, uh, and that's why it's what the square is not. Number 20, what is the value of x in the figure below? This, thing, this little box here is telling us 90 degrees, so it's a right triangle. In a right triangle, I know that one leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. It's called the Pythagorean theorem. I need to have two of these three variables, and I do. I have the one, I don't have this side, and I have the hypotenuse. So I have one squared plus the other leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. Looks kind of hard, but a square and a square root kind of cancel each other out, so that's just going to be 10. 1 times 1 is 1, so I have 1 plus x squared equals 10. I subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x squared is equal to 9, square root of both sides. x is equal to 3, or negative 3, but I discard the negative, so we're talking about the length of a side. Correct answer, answer B right here. Number 21, 5 and 2 thirds is closest to these. Which one of these? Well, first thing I do is I glance down at my answers, and this doesn't even have a 5 in it, so this one right here is out. So now I got to pick between you know, these three. 2 thirds is greater than a half, right? So there's only one answer up here greater than. 5.5, and that's answer D, so it has to be answer D. If you wanted to multiply it all the way out, you'd have that 5 and the 2 thirds. The way I think of these fractions is they fall over that away. So 3 would have to go into 2. It doesn't go into 2, so I've got to put a decimal point. 3 goes into 26 times. There's a decimal right there. 3 times 6 gives me the 18. 2, bring down the 0, goes in there 6 times. 18, bring down the 2. 18, right, so it's going to keep going 0.666, and you're going to round that up to 0.67. You could do all that division, or you could just look at your answers and pick the best choice, and you could more quickly get right to answer D. Okay, number 22 in the figure below is a regular decagon with the center at Q, what is the measure of the indicated angle? So i got to highlight that angle there. There's a couple words you need to know. Regular means all sides and angles are the same. Decagon, deca means 10, so 10-sided figure. Then what's the measure of that angle? Well, a full circle right there is 360, and it's going to cover 1, 2, 3, of the 10 sides. So this angle on the inside here is covering three of the 10 sides. All the way around is 360. I don't want to go all the way around. I only want to go three tenths of the way around. So I'm going to take what I want over the total times the total angle measure. And then 10 will go into here one time. And 10 will go into here 36 times. Whoops, the pen's not working going to here 36 times, right? So that's canceled, that's canceled. Now I have 3 times 36, 90 plus 18, 108. So correct answer, answer D, 108 degrees right there. Okay, number 23, 
Uh, two things here, negative 2.07 is equal to which fraction? So you got the negative, you got to figure that part out, and then you got to convert that seven in the decimal into a fraction. Seven right next to the decimal would be seven tenths, so that would be seven tenths, but I'm over one more place, so it's 0.07, so it's going to be seven one hundredths. So it's going to be negative two and seven one hundredths, negative two and seven one hundredths, answer B right there. All right, number 24, 62.5% is equal to which fraction? Well, we know this is how much of 100, what part of 100 it is. So first thing I'm going to do is cross out this one, 6, and this one, 6, because this is less than 100%, so it has to be less than 1. So those two don't even make sense. It is greater than a half. Only one of these fractions greater than a half is this one right here. This is a pretty big decimal, more than a half, and this is a teeny little fraction, so it can't be that one. Um, you might start to get to know your decimals and fractions uh, conversions if you start working with them. You know, 25% is a quarter. You cut 25 in half, you get 12 and a half, and then 12 and a half is gonna be an eighth. So if you're reading a tape, you know, if you were at a half, that'd be 50%, a half, plus an eighth would be five eighths. And then remember that eighth is 0.125. So 50 plus 0.125 will give you that five eighths as well. But again, you could answer that problem through a process of elimination and some really just good basic thinking. All right, last problem, problem number 25. Before I do this problem, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get the notifications as well. It helps me out a lot. Uh, 25, a line intersecting two parallel lines. So sometimes you'll see this notation of double arrows to say they're parallel. In the following figure, if angle P measures 40 degrees, what is the measure of angle Q? So one thing I do is I underline important parts in the problem. Additionally, I transfer the important parts to my diagram, and then I see if I can figure it out. Um, if I have parallel lines cut by a transversal, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, all four of those angles are congruent, meaning they're the exact same measure. This angle and this angle right here form a linear pair, meaning they add up to 180. Um, so if I have this one, I can figure out what this is. So if this is 40, this is its linear pair at 140 degrees. Two angles add up to 180, full circle 360. So the correct answer is answer D. If this is 140, this is also 140, as is this and this. All right, if you have any questions at all, post them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate you watching and supporting this channel. Thank you.